So Microsoft 365 just got an update to the semi-annual channel recently, which means that there's all new features in Excel, PowerPoint, Word, OneNote, and all of your favorite apps. So I'm gonna go through those in this video. My name is David Benheim, and I love talking about the new features in business tech, so let's get started. Let's start with Excel, which definitely has the most updates this period. So evaluate on hover. So if you have a formula like this, then if you hover over parts of it, it will show you what it's going to show. So here in Wales is a blue cell, and I can click on function arguments, and it's gonna show me sometimes all of those things together if, uh, if it's in an array like that. Or you can click on the whole thing, select the whole thing, and it will show you then what the final output is, which is 0 0.55. So this works on any formula, and it's much better than the old approach, which was, it's still here, evaluate formula which allows you to step through it and evaluate. And it, it was very, very long to get through this. So that is one new feature, evaluate on hover. So next we have dynamic arrays and charts. Now you can create a pivot table with this thing called a slicer, but if you try and create certain types of charts from this, for example, a map chart, the one that you can see in front of you, it will tell you it doesn't work. But now there is a workaround. So what you can do is you can create a dynamic array formula which will, for example, say, I can say here it equals filter. So give me all of this data. And then comma, include only the results where this column is not equal to speech marks, speech marks, which is empty. So just essentially make it so that it's not empty. And then this, these two do respond to this slicer. A slicer, by the way, not new, but if you go over here, you can right click on an item and choose add a slicer. And then it allows you to create kind of this button filter for your pivot tables, which get really useful. So that's how you can create interactive dashboards. I have another video covering those. So what you can do is after you've done that, if you want to use one of the newer charts like map charts or these histograms or the waterfall charts, etc you can create a chart from this. If you go to map, choose that one, and then Excel will kind of automatically do it. It works with countries, it works with provinces or regions in certain countries as well, as long as you kind of spell them more or less correctly. And then this does respond to slices because the slices will change the pivot table and the pivot table will change the dynamic array and the dynamic array will change the chart. So that's kind of how you can do them. I have another video on map charts if you want to learn about these in more detail. And I have another video on pivot tables if you want to learn about those in more detail. But uh, let's uh, move on to the next one. There you go, collapse that. Then the next one is get Power BI table in Excel. So if you have Power BI Pro, then in data, you can go to get data from Fabric and Power Platform, and you can choose from Power BI. And then choose your data model and you have insert table. So before you were always able to insert a pivot table, but now you can actually insert a table to get directly to the source of your data. So there you go, I can take on English Monarch and I can insert the table. It might ask you to sign in, but now it's showing you here. And this is actually the list of kings and queens of England, the real ones. <laughs> so great, back to this one. Get data from picture. So let's say that you have a picture with a table and you want to extract this into actual Excel cells. What you can do is you can, in the data tab, you have from picture over here. Now, my bit of advice, just take your screenshot, even if it is a picture to start. It'll just be much quicker and it'll get you to be more precise. So great keyboard shortcut I love is Windows Shift S, which allows you to take a screen clipping and if you draw around this, so much better than print screen that takes over the whole screen, it just allows you to create a clipping. And now it's in your clipboard. So just to prove that, if I paste it, it'll do that. But what I'm going to do is let's do it with some more space in a new worksheet. I'm going to go from picture and picture from clipboard. And now it's put it up here and I can insert the data as I wish. It has identified that some of the cells are in red, which means it doesn't know what it's doing. So here it's kind of guessing. I can go through like a spell check and say, I accept that. Note that this is US style day format, which I'll need to change. And then here as well. And I can go to review and it'll go through cell by cell, kind of like a spell check. 
it doesn't always get it completely right. If I don't want to go through the spell check and want to just insert it directly, I can click on insert data and it will tell me 10 still need review, but I can say insert anyway. There we go. And now it's put them there. Now it doesn't always do things right. For example, here it's put an S instead of a dollar sign. So you might want to change that. Here it's put one space 99, whereas it should be one dollar 99. So make sure that you test those. Here it's a comma. Um, and I find the review is not so good. So I tend to do them manually like this. This isn't the best engine that exists on the internet, but it's one you can do without paying extra money and without having to install anything. So I end up using it a fair amount for this. I find it to be pretty useful, even though it's not perfect, as I said. If you've got US dates, this was not the problem of the software. This was how the data was input. Let me give you a bonus tip. If you select that, you can go to text to columns. And this feature has nothing to do with text to columns. You want to convert it from US style month, day, year to European style day, month, year. So we press next two times because we don't care about the text to columns thing. What we do care about is in dates. We want to choose here MDY and press finish. And now it's flipped it. Didn't get it for this one because it's got a dot there. But yeah, I'll, I'll need to redo it to get that to work. But essentially, that's just it. That's how you can get data from picture. You have picture from file as well where you can upload it directly. But I find from the clipboard is much, much nicer and cleaner. All right. And now for the big one, the one that I love the most, which is drop down autocomplete. I'm going to extract this and here I have a list of things and I want to be able to apply data validation to these ones. So in name, I have these people's names. So the way that you do it is you select your data, you go to the data field and you choose data validation like you've always done. And in allow, we're going to choose a list. And here in the source, I'm going to choose it with some blanks afterwards and you'll see why and then press OK. Now, if I look at my drop down list, a couple of things have happened it has removed the duplicates. In this case, the blanks are the duplicates. So it's only got one blank. And it's also allows me to do autocomplete two things that didn't happen before. So if I type in MAR, it's going to give me all the different MAR options, which are Martin Conway, Mark Palin, and also Jack Marks, even though the beginning of the entry is Jack, it's not marks, it will still give me that because MAR is the first letters of a word. And if I do just MA, it will show me Max Terra as well. If I do TE, it will show me Terra because Max Terra, etc. So this is something that we're totally used to in pretty much every system where if you type, you get the list to automatically reduce, but Excel was very slow to get this. Where I really like it is that it reduces the need for, mu for multi-layered cascading dropdown lists. What I mean by that is that if you have a cascading dropdown list, you can just append them together by doing ampersand, speech mark, space, and then the chevron, and then ampersand again, and then that one. And that means that if I type in, for example, AF, I get the Africa options, but I also get Afghanistan, even though that is in a country, which is the Asia, Asia is the continent of it. So I choose what I want. And here I have something that will give me that output there. So if I do, for example, Iraq, IR, I've got Iraq or Iran, and then this will give me the output. Now, how do I do this? Well, it is a formula I really love, which is not brand new, but new within the last year and a half equals text split. And here you have the text, which is going to be the cell comma. And then the column delimiter is going to be speech marks, space, chevron, space, speech marks, which is what I did to join them together. Then I close my brackets, I press enter, and it will split it over multiple columns like that. And if I drag it down, it works there. But I choose fill without formatting it does give you an error if it doesn't find it, but you could use an if error clause to avoid that happening. Here we go. And you can see that it converts it away from an error into that. You can also see that it's got a blue outline around all the cells that are dependent on it. For example, let's say hypothetically, I was to do something with three entries. So I'm going to say here, Asia, 
Cambodia CM reap. If I was to copy and paste that, annoyingly data validation still breaks with copy and paste, but it means I can show this example. Now I have three different columns because now it's got three different entries. And also note that if you did have some text here that intercepts it, then if you copy and paste this and paste it in here, it will give you this spill error, which means I'm trying to spill over into that cell, but you're not letting me because you have something else there. So yeah, so that's kind of how you can do it. Another bonus one, this is not a new feature, but you'll see me expand and collapse these. If you want that to happen, what you do is you can select some rows or some columns and you can go to the data tab and choose an outline group. And I find group to be much better than hide and unhide, group and ungroup. That's how you get rid of it by ungroup because it shows you this visual indicator and you can give the user the ability to expand and collapse as they wish, which is much nicer than the original system. All right, so let's look at the other apps. So here I am in PowerPoint, and let's say that I have this that I want to say in a recording. So in the slideshow tab, I have the ability to do a record, and I can record from the current slide or from the beginning. That opens up this recording studio, which is pretty new, but what is brand new is the ability to have a teleprompter and have it show me and scroll automatically. I can also speed it up if I want to, or I can slow it down over here. This part is new. And you can also, you can change the view. So for example, if I wanna record here, I can click on that and then it will create a video file of me going through that slide. That's how I can pause it. And then here I have some other ways that I can switch out my microphones or my cameras and other aspects as well. Another thing you might want to do in this kind of scenario is have your face appear in it. So if you want to do that, you have this other feature that has been in, around for a little bit, but it's just been enhanced. And that is the ability to use a Cameo. So if I go to my Insert tab, you have this thing called Cameo. It's been around for a little bit. It's essentially a camera object of you. So if I click on this, hello. Now I'm going to be in this slide when I do the recording, or also if I present on Teams or Zoom or something else like that, and click here to turn it off. Uh, now what is new is that you can just add them to all the slides. So if I go to Insert, I can choose on the drop down, Add to All Slides, and there will be a cameo showing in all the slides like that. And I can also move each one around as I wish. So in this slide, I might want to have here. There you go. These are some of the features I just showed you in Excel. And I can also choose Morph, and then it will move the Cameo like that in a nice visual effect. And the other stuff you can do that is new is you can kind of create a different camera shape. Like, for example, I could do it in this kind of thing. And then I can apply to all the slides. Now all the slides will have this kind of middle object like that. Now I've got two cameos, which if I turn these on, it's gonna get a little bit confusing, but that's how you can do it. So that's what's kind of new in PowerPoint. By the way, I keep literal tabs on these things by customizing my ribbon through this one and customize ribbon. If you're interested in me sending you this, then let me know. And also I have a copy of the Excel file with all the tricks that you can download from the link in the description. So. We've covered that one. We've covered apply to all and insert camera and cameo shape. Next is present to Teams. So you've been able to present to Teams for a while if your document was saved on the cloud. Now you have this in every presentation. And if you do want to save it and present in Teams, then you do need to save it on OneDrive or SharePoint, somewhere on the cloud. If you are presenting in Teams with that basis, then you're allowed to have kind of like a presenter view in Teams. You also have other cool things you can do, like you can translate the slides. So here we are in a Word file, and I also have this tab where I show what is new. So transcribe and format background. So in the draw tab, you have the ability to format the background. This is useful if you're using the draw, which is what it's here for. Otherwise, I don't think it's that useful. 
And if I go to none, then that will show it to me that way. Now also, if you are going to draw, then you have this thing called ink replay. And if I click on that, then that will just replay what I've done. Now I say this is new, technically speaking, it's not new for Word, but it is new for OneNote. Whereas the other way around, format background, this is new in Word, but it's not new in OneNote. The next and final feature that I'll show you is new in both, and that is the ability to transcribe. So if I go to dictate and transcribe, I can upload an audio, this is pretty cool, and you can choose either a video or a audio file, so it might take a little bit of time to do that, but now it has it here. And you can press play to see where it's going. We got it here today. And edit it as need be. So actually it made a difference. It should say we are gathered here today. And this was a video that I recorded outside. So it's hard for it to get it. So if I do, you can change the speed if you want to go faster through the recording as well. To say goodbye. So there you go, I got that one. You can also attribute the speaker. So let's say that I want this speaker to be me, David. It tries to guess when you've got different speakers associated with it. And here it's always speaker one because it was just me doing the recording. But otherwise, it might have some other people that it tries to suggest. Great. So when you're done with this, what you can do is you can add to the document and you can add with just the text, with the speakers, with the timestamps, with speakers and timestamps. I'm going to go with just text because it's just me. And there you go. And this is kind of it. Never that red. You were never that good of a barber. You were our red bar. <laughs> That's what I said. Um, great. Now, if you want to do a new transcription, one Word doc can only store one transcription file. So it will kind of erase this. You'll keep the text here. It'll erase that. It is a bit random where it stores it. So what it does, in terms of where it stores the file, it actually creates a new folder called transcribed files inside your OneDrive in the root folder, and this will have it. There you go. There's the one that I just uploaded. So yeah, it's kind of interesting that it puts it in there. And just to show you, as I said, you can have it in Word or in OneNote. So here I'm in a blank OneNote page. So in OneNote, I have transcribe where I can record audio or transcribe this way. And I also have in the draw tab, the other two that I showed you, format background and ink replay that are new. So to check which version you're on and make sure that you have the most up-to-date one from Excel or Word or PowerPoint or OneNote, go to file and then account. And then here, if you see this yellow, that means that you have updates to install. So click on update now. And even if it's not yellow, you can click on update now and it will either tell you it needs to update or it will tell you you've got the most latest updates installed. I'm going to do that at a later time. And in this version, you should currently have 2402, which means February 02 is February and 24 is 2024. And here you should see semi-annual channel. By the way, if you have any other channel of Microsoft 365, you will have the features that I've just shown. Semi-annual is the slowest one, so they will have the features later, but any other channel, including current channel, monthly enterprise channel, will have all the features that I've shown, but they will also have some newer features as well. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. My name is David and I'm, and I have tons of videos about the new stuff. Thanks for watching.